Well, hello there. It's just something slightly different. What I'm going to talk about is Radio and Electronics Constructor magazine, and it's the data sheets that they issued, mostly in the back of the magazine, starting in 1968, and um, I think working well into the probably into the 80s. I haven't got that far yet. So typically that was the magazine and it was a kind of I'm going to say a rival to Practical Wireless I don't think there was anything any animosity about it it, it, it was just another magazine and it had uh, started life as a ham radio magazine um, for people wanting to do some construction work and the trouble was that straight after the war in 1947 when I think it was launched uh, as the radio amateur um, the problem there was that um, they were only allowed so many sheets of paper per issue. So they, they kind of split the magazine and they did Radio Constructor. Uh, this is a 19... what's this one? 19, uh, 1955. And in those days, the index page is somewhere else. So incorporating the Radio Amateur. So that's how it started. And there were the two magazines and then they split shortly... Um, yeah really shortly after the um, radio amateur was launched on its own so they could do the uh, get more paper you know out of the government's uh, allowance so this is volume 9 number 5 by this time so they are interesting reading and some of the stuff is relevant um, the earlier magazines there's no details of how to actually make the thing they give you the circuit diagram and you're expected to have enough knowledge to work out your own layout. Um, I don't know what date they changed that policy, but that's how it started. So, when we go to 1971, I'm building up to this. Mr. Chippy says I really ought to do a video on this. Um, by this time we're on construction, Constructors Data Sheet number 57. And again, you've got the um, the magazine and we've still got the index well into it and still in saying incorporating the radio amateur. Uh, remember home radio, Mitchum, mail order, they folded, I think it was 82. So that's that. So now we move forwards to November 76. That sounds interesting. The uh, by this time we've got the index in the where you'd expect it and it oh yes it still says incorporating the radio amateur editorial office 57 made avail london i looked that up on street view and it looks like it's flats these days and some of the projects are of places they had names and i noticed one of the names was a pub which was actually around the corner uh 224 now uh, robert penfold prolific writer so that's an interesting project isn't it an FM phase lock loop tuner oh I fancy doing that based on a CD4066 IC right mmm anyway what do we find at the back well we find that the data sheet has been cut out and this is the problem, and this is what the, uh, what this is about. So, this year, I've been slowly scanning my magazines, and I've managed to build up 70 data sheets, spiral bound them. There was an index later on, and, and when I come up to that magazine, I'll print it off, just to make it easier. So I've got 70 in this spiral bound thing, and what I'm discussing today is these are still relevant a lot of these data sheets are still relevant and you think where on earth will you find that information will you find it in here now these magazines a lot of you may be aware there's a website uh, American radio magazines and these aren't American at all but nevertheless uh, they are on there and I have for convenience, some of these are printed off from there rather than my own scans. So it's WW. I'm going to zoom in on that so you've got the opportunity 
Um, let's just press the right button. It might even happen. AmericanRadioHistory.com. So that's where I've been able to uh, take some from. And oh, look, there's a there's a when they scan that one, there was a. Oh, I need to zoom out again. Wrong way. Look, there was a squashed fly when they uh, when they scanned it. It's there for forever. So things like a decibel table, that's really useful. What the power ratios are to do the calculations. Frequency to wavelength conversion is, hey oh, it's delivered me a pair of glasses. Uh, is page three. Oh, when did this start? It started in February 1968. So you've your issue number one is February 1968. Number four, we've got the Morse code. Number five, capacitive reaction for audio frequencies. You know, things like that, if you're into that, that would be difficult to come up with. Capacitive reaction for radio frequencies, which are useful to us. Inductive reaction to audio frequencies. When you're building your crossovers, inductive reaction to radio frequencies useful to us. Eureka resistance wire. I don't know whether that's still available, but that was how many feet of it at what standard wire gauge gave you what resistance. So if you're making up little high power resistors, instead of buying a conventional ready made one, you can wire this Eureka resistance wire. And um, and you've got your own resistors at high power. That's um, this is going to be well out of date. UK amateur radio frequencies starting at top band 160 meters. In those days, you were limited to 10 watts. Four meters were limited to 50 watts. And 70 SEMS was 427 to 450 in those days. But business radio had some, a lot of that. <laughs> Temperature conversion from Fahrenheit to centigrade. Metric conversion. So it's gallons and pounds and tons and inches, etc. Power resistance. Did I say that right? I don't know. Multi vibrator capacitor resistor values. I've never had reason to do that. Winding temperature ta table. So inductors with cotton wire for mains transformers, TV line output and deflector coils. Uh, the resistance cold and then repeated when it's operated at a temperature. Binary to decimal conversion. Speaker transformer ratio table. This is going to be in, you know, for valve outputs. So what resistors at how many ohms impedance? 3, 8 and 15 ohms. Uh, so you can work out the ratio of the speaker transformer you need. And RS components still do a universal speaker control. A speaker transformer, I can't speak. And you can get quite a lot of different ratios from that product. It's about £12. So we've got resistance and current table. So what, how many amps you're going to be able to take out of so many standard wire gauge uh, what's this current dissipation under 50 milliamps that's uh, no not um, over 50 milliamps I'd have to uh, study that subject this is another one which is um, not my thing ER dissipation table voltages below 50 and ER dissipation table 50 volts and above Sound to frequency wavelength table, which is uh, useful for me. The amateur Q code. I try not to use any of these, you know. You do hear people on, don't you, with every Q possible. I'm the kind of person who send it in Morse f it, with all the, without the abbreviation. Hello, what is your name? <laughs> amateur abbreviations. There you are, 625 line colour and monochrome television frequency thingies. 
inch to millimeter conversion very useful uh, calculations for round things where you're using 2 pi f squares of numbers square roots of numbers cubes of numbers cube roots of numbers half wave rectifier outputs so for your res reservoir capacitor uh, with an internal resistance etc the rectified voltage at 0, 10, 20 up to 150 milliamps so when you're using valve rectifiers you're going to be losing um, quite some voltage and this tells you the kind of uh, voltage you're going to need to start off with to get the voltage you want RMSP can average values so your 10 watts RMS becomes 14.1 peak becomes 28.3 which in Dixon's watch they'd probably times it by 4 again bias resistors Dixon's were the predecessor to Curry's for those who aren't aware bias resistors for cathode emitter bias or cathode bias resistors so that can save some calculation time Phase shift oscillator, never had to do that. Capacitor resistor values. Capacitance is useful, this is useful. Capacitance units. So you the relationship between picofarads, nanofarads and microfarads. Then we've got MPF and we've got mic actually millifarads. So there we are. Abbreviations like FSD, full scale deflection. Abbreviations continued, things like RTTY, radio teletype. The Hartley oscillator, valve um, examples, Colpitt's oscillator, we had to do this, you know, when I did my radio amateur exam in 1979 or whenever I did it. Further LC oscillators, two terminal LC oscillators, crystal oscillators, useful. RC sine wave oscillators. Right then, here's some vintage stuff. So we're about 1969-1970 by this time. And PMP transistor layout leadouts for TO5, TO18 and TO39 devices. So you really got some really obsolete stuff. I and mean, we we used 2N1305s, germanium, um, as a general replacement for an awful lot of uh, of PMP germanium transistors um, there's, your there's your printout, there's your lead out, there's your TO518 and 30 amp MPN transistors and here we have the four legged ones like I was going to say like AF117 which grow all those whiskers but this isn't listed, that's not listed so it's not in that category um, the smaller power transistors like AD162 AF124 is listed here which is useful when we replacing them in those pesky Mallard modules AF117 the annoying uh, ones with the shield that go whiskery the NKT series of transistors okay time to frequency table potentiometer track current so you've got a 5k volume control for example so for a quarter of a watt one 0.25 watt which is what you normally would have you can put what 7 milliamps through that does it work out as so that's all worked out for you. So you're selecting the right number of wattage for what you need to dissipate. Foreign language broadcast. Well, I don't think much of that will be relevant. Foreign language broadcast. Again, foreign language broadcast. Inch to millimeter table. Very useful. Inch to millimeter table. Two millimeter to inch table. Millimeter to inch table. Two. Preferred resistor value. Now you can find this elsewhere. Um, you've got the E12 series and the E24. And so these are your preferred values. So um, if you wanted 
650 ohms and normally you'd put in 680 because that's the nearest preferred value now i also stock the american ones because in the uk preferred values we don't have 50 for example whereas american do so 47 would be our nearest 20 percent tolerance 10 percent tolerance and five percent tolerance well these days it's five and one percent copper wire tables very useful very important to what i do uh, standard wire gauge to the um, diameter of the wire in millimeter and copper wire table two ba screws british association screws so your standard screw used to be 4BA and so it would be number 25 drill if you're using the numbered drills um, and if you're going to have to tap it's number 33 and so on that very useful data meter shunts so you've got a an ammeter and you want to turn it into a a, a um, uh, so now start that again. You have a milliamp meter. You want to turn it into an ammeter, and these are the calculations. Meter shunts two, coil data. So this is micro Henry's. How many turns? There's a worked examples for 1.3 micro Henry's. Worked examples for 5.4 micro Henry's. Worked example for 23 micro Henry's. More coil data. 26 micro Henry's. Resonant frequencies, my piece of stuff is disappearing. So, megahertz for tuned circuits having inductance from 1 to 20 microhenries and capacitance from 5 to 320. Resonant frequencies 2, and that's as far as we've got. I've just plonked in the odd one as a wavelength to frequency table there. So, that's that. So that is useful data. There was an index, I say, I'll put that to it when I get to it. Um, I've stopped at 70. There's a reason I've stopped at 75. The next copy they've got at the American magazine site is a photocopy, a bad photocopy. I've dragged out my magazine, and like this one I showed you, somebody had the back page. And I've just found one on eBay for a lot of money, and I've ordered it. Um, so I'm going to have that, and I will also upload it to the this website, so they've got a colour uh, copy of the uh, back page. So the other thing I'm going to talk to you about, while we were looking through these magazines, I found a very, very simple medium wave. They did it as a pocket radio. This is when the ZN414... Um, IC first kind of came out uh, and it was, you know it was a pound to buy back then which was a lot of money so the prolific writer F.G. Raya, if you want to read some of his science fiction stuff as well, it's excellent has done this little um, I was going to say transistor radio but it's not so the TRF ZM414 is now MK484 is the current version of it which is plastic cased so you've only got three legs to it and uh, not a lot of other components can make up a whole radio. Well, around this era, there were quite a few magazine projects, including Practical Wireless, running projects using this. They did a very similar radio in Practical Wireless in, I think it was May 873, and this is June 73 in Radio Constructor. The Practical Wireless one used the MFC 4000B um, audio IC, which was hard to get. Uh, even the back then but this uses a silicon and two germanium transistors to drive the speaker so it's much more doable today um, and this back then was this fantastic um, microchip from Ferranti which was this complete TRF radio well, I had reason to um, look inside a current model radio that um, someone at church bought and uh, they said, can you just look at this rather than we take it back to Argos? They'd only just bought it, it just didn't work. It turns out there was a dry joint, I just sorted it out. But when I looked inside this AM FM radio, it had an FM chip and it had an AM chip and the AM chip, chip was the MK484. So 
So a lot of radios you're buying today are actually TRF. And so we've gone backwards. You know, there weren't many TRFs, were there really, after the 1930s when Super Hats had been developed. So that's interesting to note. But you can get away with it because there's so few radio stations on. Uh, when I've demonstrated those cheap Chinese radio kits we've put together, and we've got some more to do, uh, we've a, we can only pick up one or two stations out here. So I'm going to put that together just for a laugh, and that's going to be a video. So we've got a components list. I printed off a second one, and I've ticked off what we've got. Um, just need to get one or two uh, other parts, and then we'll, that uh, will go. We'll do the video probably in two parts, uh, put the electronics together, just on the bench, bare board, you know, that kind of thing, and then we'll case it and, and finish it off. But I don't need to know, I don't know what the case size will be till we've got all the parts, because I'm not going to use one of those hateful little polyvericon tuning capacitors like they did. That was the uh, Dillamin, wasn't it, from, uh, um, is the they say so? They did, yeah, the Dillamin from Jackson Brothers. Um, so, we'll get a more conventional one and make it bigger. You wind your own fire at rod for this as well. And it's done on 0.15 plane Vera board. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're not going to be using a see-through case like they did. And Oh yeah, there's our, this is why I bumped into that project. And uh, I'll just show you, we've actually got the very useful box here with some very useful parts for that little silly little project so it's going to be interesting to put it together with Nikki Kong capacitors isn't it and and one percent resistors so that's what this is about this is what today's video is about we've got a Midland 2001 coming mail order and it's a car boot sale purchase and we need to sort that out and I took one look at it and I think we'll be starting by sorting out the power lead because um, I don't think there's a fuse in it. So there we have it. The Radio and Electronics Constructor Magazine data sheets discussion. And I say they started 1968 and went through to the early 80s if I remember correctly. Thanks for watching.